This is Minister Gail. Week 1 Introduction to Learning the 22 Letters of the Hebrew Alphabet. In respect to the free teaching and copyright laws to others, there is to be no duplication or copies made of this class or program. Learning the Hebrew Alphabet we will go over the letters from the ancient to the modern Hebrew. Psalm 119 is the Hebrew alphabet. Psalm 119 is in the form of an acrostic writing in which the first letter or syllable or word of each line or paragraph or other recurring feature in the text spells out a word message or the alphabet. The Hebrews did not use numbers for verses. That was inserted later by the Roman Catholic Church. Book of Esther has Lord in acrostics hidden in the book in Hebrew. Psalm 119 There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Five letters, when they're used at the end of the word, have a different shape, but they are the same letter in Hebrew. There are two letters that just use a mark in the word. Aleph is the first letter. It is always silent, it is not an A in Hebrew, and it's always in the word with an apostrophe or a mark, and so is the ayin, the I has a mark. These will have the same apostrophe in the word. It will either be the aleph, which is first or strong, or an ayin for the I. The second letter is bet, when it has the b, the gash, the dot in the middle. Without the dot, it's pronounced as a v, written as a b in the word, like debarim, but it's pronounced devarim. Gimel is g, Dalet is D, H is H, it's open here, open H. Vav is the modern for the Vav for the sixth letter or W. Sometimes it'll be written as a W or a V in the word. W is the older way of writing it. Zayin for Z, Chet, guttural sound, Chet, like Bach, CH, closed H. Tet for T or T-E, Yod, the tenth letter Yod, Y, or sometimes I-Y, Kaf, when there's a dot in the middle, or Chaf, this is at the end of the word, or final or Safi, Chaf, Lamed, L, Mem, M, final or Safi, M, Mem, N, Nun, Final or soft feet, noon. Samek, this is an S or a soft C, not an O. Ayin is for the third I, the I or a mark. P, pe, with a dot in it, it's a P. Without the dot, it's an F or a PH. At the end of a word or final soft feet, it's a F, PH with no dot, P with a dot. Tasadi can be spelled with TZ or TS. And there's the final Safi Tzadi, Kof, Q, R, Resh, S-H when the dot's over here, for Sheen, S-I for Seen, and T, Tav, when the dot's in there with no T, it's a T-H. I'll go over these more thoroughly in detail. The ancient Hebrew alphabet has a pictogram for each letter. Adam named the animals, so he had to have an alphabet. This is the ancient pictogram, which is in your Psalm 119. This is the ancient pictures that go with each letter, the 22 letters. So this had the picture of an ox head. It's written as a marker or silent for Aleph. The pH can be a pH or an F. Either way is correct. 
and then I will go into these with more detail, but here's your ancient alphabet. Dalet, this is not the third eye. This is a portal and a door. The third triangle, it represents a door. And these are the ancient symbols. A shepherd's staff, water, the seed, support, the third eye, the eye wheel within the wheel, your mouth, branch of righteousness, Q for queen, head or authority, Shiva, and the last is the seal. It's an evolving alphabet. First, it started out with the hieroglyphics and had the Hebrew and then the Egyptians copied the Hebrew. Everybody copied from the Hebrew alphabet. Here's the Phoenician, early Greek, then the regular Greek, Latin, and they took the first letter and made it into an A. It is not an A in Hebrew. They made that into an A, but that is not an A in Hebrew. So here's your mid-Hebrew alphabet, about 1000 BC. So they have this astrolabe shape, but it's actually a mark in the Hebrew. House, Gimel, there's your third, they made that. That is a door, a portal, a portal to the sun. It's a door, an opening, it's an opening, not an eye. And this was supposed to be the window, tent peg, Zorro, Z for the Zorro sword. Fence connecting up, basket, hand, crown, staff, water, seed, support, the third eye, the eye, which is just a mark in Hebrew, pay for the mouth, fish hook, there's a woman symbol there, Q, this is the Q, the woman symbol, sun on the horizon, resh, teeth, look like teeth, she, Shiva, teeth and tearing, chaos, and this is the mark, the last and cross and covenant. So it used to look like a cross, the last letter. Hebrew reads from right to left and back to front of books. So when they have a book, they start on the back, the right side, and read from the back to the front. The Hebrew alphabet are all upper case letters. There are no lower case letters in the entire Hebrew alphabet. Even today in the modern Hebrew, there are no lowercase letters. That is a Greek and Roman Latin makeup, made up letters. Alphabet is a Hebrew word, aleph, bet. So you've been using the word alphabet is actually from the Hebrew, aleph, bet. Here's your Phoenician alphabet from the ancient Hebrew right to left. And this is where it started generating into different shapes again. They read left to right. They changed it from left to right. They're always trying to change God's word, the Greeks and the Romans. Always trying to change God's word. They did this and changed it all this way. So here's your original old alphabet starting right to left. Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, He, Vav, Zayin, Chet. Sometimes it has an H only, but it's C-H-E-T. Tet, Yud, Chaf, Lamed, Mem, Nun. Samech, Ayin, Pe, Sadi, Chof. Resh, Sheen, and Sain, and Tav. It's supposed to be T-A-V. The Greek and Roman have T-A-U and T-A-W. There's a variation of the Aleph, a variation of the Gimel, a variation of He. J is not a Hebrew letter. It's never used in the Hebrew language. 
was added later by the Roman Latin. F or PH is used for the same words. Either way is correct, PH like in Phyllis. It's pronounced as an F or PH, either way is correct. Jehovah is a Roman Catholic word for Yehovah. So the Roman Catholics took out the Y, the Yod, the power letter, and replaced it with J, which is not in the Hebrew alphabet. So those are actually the very exact same word. Yehovah or Jehovah is the same word for the Lord. It can be spelled Yahweh or Yehovah. It's still the same. Remember, W is the ancient way of writing it. V is the modern way of writing it. Yahweh. Y H V H. The Lord is English for Yehovah in Hebrew, pronounced Yehovah, Jehovah in Roman Latin. All the same word for Lord. And the Hebrew added the vowels later for pronunciation. So when the Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew is Y, H, V, H. The vowels were added later just for pronunciation. So this is all exact same word in your Bible. Lord, Yehovah, Jehovah, all the exact same word in the Old Testament. Remember the Lord said he was the first and the last and the beginning and the end, the first and the 22nd letter, Aleph Tav, Aleph Tav, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. In Deuteronomy 6, 4, the Shema, it ends with the word, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. In the word one in Hebrew, it has first yoke to the door, first yoke to the door, first yoke to the door. He was already saying in the word one that he was the first door. The last letter is Tav, which has a little foot on it, the blood over the door for Passover, sealed, the covenant in blood, it's also the ancient letter was a cross, the blood over the door, Tav, Tav. The word blood in Hebrew is Dam, D-A-M, and it's spelled D-A-M. You read down and up. Dom is the word for blood. Dom. Dalet is the letter for door. Mem is the covering or water. Covering or water in Hebrew. The blood covering the door, the Passover. Dom. Remember that this is a silent marking. It's just a mark for Aleph and Ayin. So here it is in order is the first letter is the Aleph, but it will only be a mark. Then it's B, C, H, D, G, H, I, Y, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, S, S, H, I, or S, A, I, T, or X, T, E, T, Z, T, S. Then you have V, W, Y, I, and Z. That is the Roman and Greek order of the alphabet, not the Hebrew order. Notice there's no J. These are lookalikes. 
This is your original today's Hebrew. Hey, has an open H, open H, Chet, Chet is your closed H, C H E T, and Tav has a little foot on it. So here's lookalikes Tav, Chet, closed H, H. H is the open, open H. Hebrew uses words for numbers in the Bible. Each letter has a numeric value. I will go over this more thoroughly during the lesson. So Aleph has a value of one, Bet's a value of two, Gimel three, Dalet four, He five, Fav six, Sayin seven, Chet eight, Tet nine, Yod ten, Chaf twenty, Lamed thirty, Mem forty, Noon fifty, Semek sixty, Ayin seventy, Pe eighty, Tasadi ninety, then your chuf is the hundred, resh is two hundred, she is three hundred, tav is four hundred. Remember I said there was five letters at the end of the word that have a different shape. Well, this is where they applied these numbers here. You can use them for five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred, and nine hundred. Greek and Romans changed the order and the shape of the letters from the original Hebrew alphabet. Here's your lookalikes. Remember, they're all consonants. Y is a consonant in Hebrew. It is not a vowel. So you have the KH, the D, and the R. This has more of a sweep to the top of it. The LED has a little door edge at the top there. The KH. Is a soft feet at the end and it falls and there's always on a line the letters are on a line and there's five that fall below the line the V the Vav N Nun is longer Zayin almost looks like a sword handle on a sword or a seven Zayin H H is the open H closed H and the TH has a little foot on it. Gimel is four inch high heel. G N noon for the seed. This one has a little high heel. This one sweeps around the back for the N. V. This is the B pronounced as a V when there's no dot. Ch K H the crown, holiness unto the Lord. K H T S or T Z. This has a little tree branch here. Ayin, the Egyptian I, is just a mark. Ayin, but this has a branch coming on the side. Mem M, the Safit Mem has a squared off corner. The Sabek has a rounded one. Samek or soft C, not an O, it's an S or a soft C. Aleph is a mark, B, Bet, V when there's no dot, G for Gamel, D for Dalet, H for an open H, V or W, when there's a dot above, it's an O. When there's a dot to the left, it's a U. Zayin, Z, CH, close H, T or TE, Yod, Y or I, K, with a dot, it's a K, with no dot, it's Ch, Ch, L for Lamed, M for Mem, 
final or soft feet M. And for noon, final or soft feet N falls below the line. And this one falls below the line. And that falls below the line. Samek, soft C or S. Ayin, the Egyptian I, has a mark just like Aleph. And here's just a mark. Hard P, when there's a dot there for the mouth, pay. Pay, final or soft P, has, falls below the line. PH, sounds like F, this falls below the line, final or soft feet, F. TZ or TS, looks like a tree, final or soft feet, falls below the line. Q, for woman or bride. Queen, R, Resh, S, H with a dot, S, I with the dot on the left, T when the dot's in there, T, H with no dot. Sometimes they will pronounce the ones without a dot as a T, hard. It's not always a tight 100% rule Sometimes the words will be spelled, but it'll have the same letter, but some of them will be hard or soft. You'll see it here with the KH, the CH, and this letter, you'll see sometimes they switch it around. So here's the first letter, Aleph, Aleph. It's always written as a mark in the word. It has a mark, it's the first letter. It used to look like an ox, Strong ox, Aleph, and then it converted to an A. First beginning, a ram, strong leader, mark. It's a strong ram. Here's the Ostrolabe. It's what it looked like in the middle of 1000 BC, and then they changed it today in Hebrew, but the Greek and Roman left it as this. The value of one or 1,000, and it's first. Ox, leader, strong, ram, a male sheep. The leader. B or V, it's B when there's a dot of dagash in the middle of it. It's pronounced as a B. When it's written, spelled like this without the dot, it's spelled with a B, but pronounced as a V, spelled as a B in the word like Devarim, but pronounced Devarim, V. And this is the tent home or family, and the original shape looked like a Bedouin tent. Over here, 2000 BC, it has the shape of a Bedouin tent, and they evolved to this shape today. Value number of two, tent, home, our family. Gimel, G, the third letter, foot, lifted up, pride. Here's what it looked like in 2000 BC, and then it evolved to this shape today. And I say it looks like a four inch high heel, like a high heel, so you can see pride and lifted up is where a four inch high heel helps you remember that's the Gimel. Very pry lifted up. You get hats so big you can't see the eyes of a person. That's not good because the Holy Ghost looks into the eyes. When you look into the eyes of a person, you don't want to be hiding behind the eye. You want your eyes to reflect the image of Christ. So this is high and lifted up. Value number of three. Trinity. D, fourth letter, door, portal, instant entrance or opening. So the original shape looked like this kind of a door. So that would be your tent door. It had the shape of a tent door hanging on a tent there. And then it 1000 BC looked like the portal for the third eye. And today this is the shape in Hebrew. And it has a little edge on the back of it. Little edge on the door there, door edge. Portal, door opening, value of four, 
And if this is the third eye of the pyramid, the top of a pyramid, portal to the sunlight, worship to the sun god. H, the fifth letter. Ha, ha. This stands for the Holy Spirit. Air, breath. <sighs> Revelation, breathe, inspiration. This is for your inspiration. This is the Holy Spirit. Wind and breath coming out of this letter. <sighs> Here it is with a man's arms raised up, breathing in air. Today, this is what it looks like. The open H. Yehovah. Yehovah, the breath of the Lord, the breath of the Lord is the Holy Spirit, the wind, value of five, six, the number of man, it used to be a W, now it's a V, but either way is correct, 2000 BC it was a tent peg, a nail, and now it evolves to this and it stands for man, nail, Tent peg, nail, or man, nail, nailed into the hand of a man, Jesus Christ. And when he had the nails put in his hands, they were not small. They were the huge tent spikes. He had a tent spike nailed into his hands and his feet on the cross. The number of six. World Wide Web. W, 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 six, six, six. When the dots to the left, it's pronounced as an E, U, E, U, like in blue. When the dots above the vowel, it's pronounced as O, like in yellow, O. When the dots above, when it's without a dot, it's a V or a W. Cut sword, Hebrews 4.12. The word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. Z7, Zorro. Cut sword, your word is the value of seven. Your word is the sword, weapon, or plow. This is what it looked like originally, a plow. Today it looks like the number seven, or a sword with the handle. The handle on a sword. Think of a sword, the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword, Hebrews 4.12, dividing, value of seven. Eight, ch, use the guttural sound like bach, eight, ch, ch, eight. A wall, fence, hedge, yoke, separate. There's a wall or a fence, there's a fence. A wall or a fence, it can be spelled several different ways, but in the word it will be a CH. Sometimes it's just an H, but it's supposed to be a CH. Closed H, the value number of eight, where you're yoked to God. Wall, fence, yoke, or a hedge of protection. The word life has chet in it, chayim. Tet, or t. Sometimes it will be written as a T or a T-E. 75% of the time it's only written as a T. It's basket, covered, surrounded, womb. Think of nine months, a baby in the womb, all protected. Moses in the basket in the river. And if you look at this closely, it looks like a sonogram of a baby in the womb. Looks like a baby, a fetus, a baby in the womb. Nine months, a baby in there on a sonogram. Think of the womb, protection, basket surrounding in the womb. Value of nine, nine months. The power letter, Yod, sometimes I or Y. Exodus 15, 6, thy right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, his word so when he says he's seated at the right hand of power, it's not a second chair in the throne room. It's the power letter. The power of God is through the name of the Lord, the name of Jesus Christ. The right arm of God, the power is in the name of the Lord. All through the Old Testament, 
David, when he fought Goliath, he said, I come in the name of the Lord. He was talking about the right hand of power. With a slingshot, with one stone, he took down the giant. I come in the name of the Lord. The yod looks like a slingshot. And he comes in the power, the right hand of power. It's not a little right arm. It is the power arm. And when they read their Bibles, they use a yad, which is the word for hand. They have a little hand. And that's how the Hebrew reads their Bible. The Orthodox do not touch the paper. They use a yad, a pointer. They do not touch the paper on the Bible. Sometimes yah, ja, ya is the power. The arm of God, the tenth letter. The power of ten. The Lord said the power of ten. You don't give me five, give me ten. When you give me ten, it's ten for prayer. Two hands together equals the value of ten. And it's the power of prayer. Give me ten. Give me ten. I is also pronounced like E, like a long E, not an I. So it's Levi, not Levi. K H K K, the eleventh letter Ch, Ch or a K is crown, submit, palm, bowing down, subject to. I said it looks like the holiness unto the Lord, a crown. Looks like a crown on the king to remind you that this is submitting to the palm of the hand. When he lifted up his staff, when Esther came in the room. She had to submit to the king, and with his right arm, he had the power to lift it up, or for her to live, and down to die. The power in the hand of the king. It has the value number of 20, palm of the hand. And they have amulets made that look like a hand with a third eye in them. It's a hand, but I say it looks like a crown over the people bowing as subjects to the king's arms, the king's arms and the subjects bowing to the king, the palm of the hand. And that's the final or soft feet, which is below the line. Same letter, different shape at the end of the word. L, 12, Lamed, for staff, shepherd, leader, teach, goad, and authority. So when he said you are coming against the pricks, it was the pricks of the goad. The goad, the shepherd's staff is called a goad in Hebrew. Teaching, learning, pointing, prick, goad, shepherd, authority, discipleship. It was the shepherd's staff, Lamed, the shepherd's staff, the goad, the goad. When he said to Saul, why well, kick against the pricks of my goad, the shepherd's staff? It's pointless. You can't kick against the Lord. He has the authority and discipleship. The shepherd, the value of 30. Value of 30. Here's your ram's horn. Looks like the same thing, like the shepherd's staff. The ram's horn. Power and authority. M for water, value number 13th letter in the Hebrew alphabet. For water, cover, wipe, clean, remove sin. Water removes dirt. So in 2000 BC is a mem. Today it looks like this. And it's a mikvah in the Hebrew. They have a baptismal bath. The word bath in Hebrew is for the volume of water and the mikvah which they still take today in the synagogue. They get in the bath for repentance and to relax. It's a mem, the final sophit M looks like this. It's a mem, squared off. Remember they went through the water. First Corinthians 10, four, they went through the water. The Red Sea was like a baptism. Open mem and closed mem, water, blood, Covering and clean. Just 
just like Acts 2.38. You have to take a bath to get washed from sin, Acts 22.16, to wash away your sin in the name of the Lord. Water. You need water to be clean, a whole bath to be clean. Seed, air, and noon, it's pronounced noon, the 14th letter, noon, value of 50. Seed, air, offspring, continue, life, or fish. Look like this picture in 2000 BC, the seed. Today it looks like this. The promise to Abraham to Isaac was through Isaac, not Ishmael. The promise of the covenant was given from Abraham to Isaac. The seed, the heir to continue the tribes of Israel is through Isaac, the seed. When we are born again in the spirit, John 3 through 8 and Acts 2, 1 through 8, we have become heirs of Christ. You must speak in other tongues when you're filled with the spirit and born again to be an heir of Christ. If you do not speak in unknown tongues, then you are not yet an heir to Christ. John 3 through 8. The sign is to speak in other tongues. Mark 16 for Jew and Gentile. Value number 50. S or soft C. It is the 15th letter. It looks like this shape round. It's not an O. Rock, support, tree, protect, blessing. It looked like a tree back here. Now it looks like a rock today. The support, the chief cornerstone to build your church on. The priestly blessing has 60 bones used in the arms for the priestly blessing. 60, the value of 60, your rock, your support. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. Isaiah 28, Acts 4, Jesus is the name to be saved by today for all Jew and Gentile. The rock. The third I, the I, is just a mark, just like Aleph. The 16th letter, I, watch, webcam, the wheel within the wheel. The wheel within the wheel. The I is watching you. The I is watching you today. It looks like this shape. And I said, if you remember an Egyptian eye, it helps you remember this shape. Looks like an Egyptian eye. It'll be written as a mark in the word. The value of 70. Don't confuse it with the Saudi, which is coming up. Two different shapes. This one's like an eye. This one looks like a tree. The third eye. This has six, six, six. When you go around, looks like a six. The eye. There's your webcam watching you. This is the Jewish Hamsa, which is an amulet like the crystals they use in the New Age cult. This is the Hamsa, which is an amulet. It does nothing. They have it hanging in the doors of the Israelites over in Israel for protection against the enemy, like crystals and like Mary's beads. It does nothing. It is absolutely an all amulet, which has no power at all. It's just a decoration. They put the third eye in the middle of the hand, thinking that it has power over the enemy which is a bunch of nonsense. There's your peacock, which is in your Hindu, the third eye, the third eye, the wheel within the wheel. These are all amulets and talismans to ward off evil spirits like Mary's beads. They have no power or crystals, no power over the enemy. Pay or fay, F like in Phyllis, P-H like in Phyllis, 17th letter, mouth, to speak, scatter, life, death. Speak with the tongue is the power of life or death. Look like a mouth. And here's what it looks like today. So it still looks like a face with a tongue. The mouth is open, pay. When it has a dagash, the dot in the middle. With no dot, it's P-H or F 
E, F, F is the pH, a mouth to speak or cast, value number of 80. This is the mouth, the final or soft feet. With the dot, it will be a P. Without the dot, it's a PH or F. These are both going to be the same letter in the word. Just at the end of the word, it's going to look like this. Same letter, different shape. Exact same letter. And this falls below the line, so you'll know with this, like a little tongue in there, you'll know that that's a PH, F, or P with the dot. TS or TZ, the 18th letter, stands for Path, Desire, Journey, Righteous Branch. It looked like this shape in 2000 BC, and today it looks like this. And I said it looks like a tree, it has like a branch on the side, so you don't confuse it with the ayin, which is the eye, the Egyptian eye. This looks like a branch, standing for the righteous branch the branch of the tree of life, the branch of righteousness, the fine or soft feet at the end of a word, it will fall below the line and look like this shape, the value of 90. It will be spelled with T-S or T-S or T-S-I, T-S-E, T-Z. They're all for the branch of righteousness. Isaiah 11, 2. For the spirit of the Lord, is wisdom, understanding, counsel, power, knowledge, the fear of the Lord, and the I am. The seven branch menorah that's in the temple and tabernacle in the Bible was the lights, the seven lights, the seven eyes, the seven spirits, the tree of life, and the branch of righteousness. Tasadi. Q, the 19th letter. Is the sun on the horizon, queen, bride, or woman? Worship to the woman. And this is the shape that it has. Looks like the female symbol in medicine or the Egyptian Anka has this shape here. And there's a website, QOF, which lists every disease known to mankind and the letters. The sun on the horizon is all about time the RFID chip in the hand. Over in Switzerland, there is a place called CERN, that is a abbreviation for a French words, CERN. It's over in Switzerland, if you can Google it on Google Images or to Google Search Net. And the Walmart has a symbol at the same symbol logo on their shirt matches the symbol on the side of CERN building over in Switzerland. Here's the RFID chip. This is the beast. The mark of the beast is the chip. Worship to the woman. And in India, this is called a lingam and a yoni, and they do a fruit basket like Cain did. We had the unacceptable sacrifice of the fruit basket. And the, when you translate the word lingam from Hindu, it means mark. Also, the word um in yoga means mark and worship to Allah. It is a translation for the word Allah and Hindu. Shiva is the mascot, the symbol in India. See the woman's signal here in the Roman, the Queen of Heaven. They worship Mary in the Roman church, the zodiac, all about time in the sundial. In front of the Vatican is the same yoni and lingam that matches from India. They copied India. The Catholic Church copied India in worship to the woman, foreign gods, the sun on the horizon. This is used to hold the wafers, the wafer, the host at the Catholic Communion, and there's a small Allah crescent moon in there, matches the Shiva, the sun rays, just like the Shiva goddess in India. It matches the Indian, East Indian, Eastern religions is the Catholic religion. Queen of Heaven, worship to Ishtar, Egypt, India, China, and Rome, all the same. And then when Cain was marked, 
It's the word Hebrew H226 for oath. In the mark, he was marked and not allowed to die. And when you translate the word Cain into Hebrew, it's Cain with the woman. Cain has the Q, value of 100. All about the woman, worship to the woman. The end of Gentile times is coming up. The end of Gentile times is almost to the end. All about the time with the sun on the horizon where the beast will rise up and rule this earth for seven years in the tribulation. R, ruling in authority, looks like a fist, a ruling fist. This is the shape today. The headship, authority, chief, ruler. And when I say it looks like a head, I said it looks like a fist to remind me that it's R, ruling and reigning, resh. Resh is R, ruling and reigning, authority. R-E-I-G-N, to reign. Resh, the value of 200. Don't confuse it with the Dalet, and don't confuse it with the Vav. It has a bigger, longer head on it. Not sharp like a Dalet, and it's longer than the Vav. The power of Jesus Christ, he has the power and authority over this earth. It's his word, the Old and the New Testament. It's his word. S-H, S-H-I, S-I-N, the 21st letter. Teeth, destroy, chaos, storm, and the priestly blessing. El Shaddai, the Almighty God, Numbers 26, 24 to 26, is the priestly blessing, the Aaronic, Aaronic blessing done by the Jewish men of the Lord. They pray over their families and do this hands thing for the priestly blessing which makes the W for El Shaddai, S-H, priestly blessing. This stands for the Almighty God, who can bring storms and chaos. He can destroy in one night. So it has the symbol of the teeth tearing, destroying. This is the shape here for two teeth. And this is the shape today. And it also is a signature for Allah. The three or the five, the five and the three stands for Allah, five, three. This also is the Hindu symbol for um, for yoga, which is the word for Allah. The signature for Allah, and it's the um and yoga for Allah. So when you do um and yoga, you are saying Allah. The three or the five, if you turn it sideways. And you'll see on their websites, the signature for Allah looks just like that. So here's the she, is the SH has the dot above it on the right, then it's SHI. The dot on the left, the Dagash, is SIN for S. It'll just be a S, and this will be a SH. When they write the word out, it could be spelled these different ways. Number value of 300. And this is the origin of your trinity. Here's the teeth and the three. The Allah and Hindu from Shiva, the worship of many gods. On the back of the Pope's robe is IHS, Latin for I am the Savior. And it has a cross in these three pens with the sunlight. But if you flip it over, then we have the upside down cross of Satan. SHI for Shiva for chaos and destroy. So he's wearing the Shiva symbol on the back of his robe, showing that the Roman Catholicism comes from Hinduism. They were the originators of God as three persons, and they have many arms on these gods. And it's the Vishnu, Shiva, Brahma, Shiva, and Vishnu. Brahma is the god of creation, Shiva is destruction, and then Vishnu was supposed to regenerate the earth. This was called the Trimurti in Hinduism. In Catholicism, they changed the word to Trinity, trying to tell you God was three persons, which is not true. It is a lie. 
and that came up in 325 AD. Trimurti started in 1450 BC and they just copied it, turned it upside down. Confusion in the worship of God. This is the philosophy of mysticism and Kabbalah, Masons originating from Hinduism, Jainism, India, and yoga. All false worship. This is not truth. Trinity is not truth. God is not three persons. Deuteronomy 6, 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Blurred vision, not truth. The following have missing truth. The Talmud, Kabbalah, Koran, Jehovah Witness, Hindi, Mormon, Morals and Dogma, your Freemason. These are secret cults. New Thought, Wiccan, Yoga, Scientology, Dianetics, Psychic, Psychics, and Trinity ideology. These have missing truth. No truth is in these. This is missing truth. And Kabbalah in Hebrew means Kaaba means to quench. And Allah in Hebrew means to go up to God to ascend. So Kabbalah means to quench the fire of God going up to God. To quench the fire going up to God. Your worship to God. The Kabbalah removed the Holy Spirit truth from the last testament of the Bible. TH is the last letter. T and TH, the 22nd letter. Seal and covenant. Cross, last, end. It looked like a cross. Looked like an X marks the spot. And today it looks like this. The blood over the door, the tom. When there's a dagosh, a dot, it's Tom. When there's no dot, it's a T-H. Or S-A-V, I've seen it pronounced that way. That means blood, covenant, cross, seal, sign, end, and last. The value of 400. The ancient symbol looked like a cross. And the modern symbol looks like this. The blood over the door. The Tav, X-238, is the last an original covenant plan of salvation and baptism for all Jews, Gentiles, Muslims, Asians, of all cultures and backgrounds. Acts 2.38 was the last covenant for salvation before the end of the world. Here's a review of the Hebrew alphabet. They read right to left. Aleph has the value of 1 or 1,000. Remember, it's a mark, not an A. It's a mark. So is Ayin is a mark. They have the exact same apostrophe in the word, but the letter changes the meaning to the word. B, Bet, has the dot. The Dagash makes it a B. Without the dot, it's written as a B, but pronounced as a V. Like in Deborah, it'll be Devorah. Debarim, but pronounced Devarim, spelled with a B, pronounced as a V. G, the four-inch high heel, Gimel, for lifted up, pride. D, Dalet, for door, D. H, open H, for Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, breath, inspiration. V or W, this number six for man. Z. Zorro, number seven, Z. Ch, ch, eight, life. Yoked together, when you're yoked to the Lord, you have life. Jesus said, I am the way, truth, and life. Tet, T, most of the time it's T. He has a little sonogram with the baby in there, protection. Y or I, E, pronounced as an E, Yod, Yod. The power letter, 10, the value of 10, Yod, David Slingshot. K, hard sound with a dot, the value of 20, KH with no dot, Ch, K, final or soft feet is the final. It looks like this shape at the end of the word, falls below the line. These are all the same letter, K or K, KH or KH. 
At the end of the word, it will look like this for the K or KH. L, la med, the shepherd's staff. M for water, covering, wipe out, wash. Value 40. M, final or soft feet. Soft feet, M, same water, covering. It can be the value of 40 or 600. N, noon, noon, N, for seed, air, H-E-I-R. Same letter, N, falls below the line at the end of the word. The final letter in a word, it will have this shape for N, noon. S, it's not an O, S or soft C, Samek, rock, support the rock, 60 value. Y, Ayin, it's the Ayin with a mark, not a Y. It's an Ayin for the mark, the I, the third I, value of 70. Aleph has a mark. Ayin has a mark in the word, an apostrophe. P with a dot, the mouth has a mouth with a tongue. P, the value of 80. P, H, or F with no dots there, no dagesh. Final or soft feet at the end of the word. It will have this shape with the dot, it's a P. With no dot, it's a P, H, or F. Value of 800. T.S. or T.Z., the tree of life. Tree of life, branch of righteousness, Isaiah 11, 2. Has the branch, T.S. or T.Z., value of 90. Tasadi, the finer or soft feet. Tasadi is the tree of life, branch of righteousness. Aaron's rod that budded, the branch. Q for woman, bride, queen. Value of 100. Kof, R, Resh, has a longer head on it. So you have the value 200. So here's Resh, and here's V, Vav, has a shorter top to it. Dalet has an edge, the door, has a door edge on the back there. Vav shorter, the Resh is longer, ruling and reigning. SH for Shiva, teeth, destroy, destruction, or the priestly blessing of El Shaddai. SH has the dot on the right. Dot on the left is S or SI for seen, seen. Five, 300. Shiva. T has the dot. Value 400. Tav or TAU in the Greek or Roman. And with no dot, it's the TH. This is not going to be in the word the. The is not spelled with the th. Remember that. This is th in the Hebrew word, not the English word for the. Value 400. The blood over the door. The cross. The end. So you have th or t. You have h was an open h or a closed HCH, no foot. See, this has a foot, no foot. Open H for Holy Spirit, breath. The word echad for the word one has a value of 13. Esther was able to defeat the Persians on the 13th day of the month, on Friday the 13th. Read right to left, echad, echad, alef, ch, dalet, yoked to the door. First, yoke to the door. Jesus said he was the door. Apostrophe, e, ch, a, d. These are vowels. We're going to go into that later. 1 John 5, 7, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. One Lord, I am Yahweh, that is my name. One Lord, I am. His name is Yehovah in Hebrew, 
Jesus in English or Roman, Italian, Latin is Jesus because it has the J. I am. Isaiah 45, 22. Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. I am, singular, singular. I am, the I am, singular. Isaiah 45, 21. Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Remember, the right hand of the Lord is a power of the Lord. Not a literal right arm, but his power. Yod. Jesus, Yahweh, is the Lord. Jesus, Yehovah, is the Lord. I am that I am. Lord is H3068, Yehovah, Y-E-H. Now, this shouldn't be a V. It should actually just be an O-A-H. So, really, if you pronounced it correctly, it would be Yo, Yo, because you shouldn't pronounce this V because it has a dot above it. It should be Yo. Jehovah, the existing one. No J in Hebrew, the proper name of one true God, Strong's definitions, self-existent or eternal, the name of the Lord. John 1 and 14, John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The word was God, the inspiration 114, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. The Son was the word manifested. The word manifested in John 1.1, 1, 1, and became flesh and blood in the Son of God. God is one, Deuteronomy 6.4, his name is one. So in English, it's I am. In Latin, it's Jesus. In Greek, it's Iesus. Islam, it's Isa. Spanish, Jesu. French, Jesus. Italian, Jesu. African, Jesu. In Hebrew, it's Yehovah, not Yeshua. Yeshua is a verb. H3444 and H3467. Yeshua is not the name of God. It is a verb for the saving process. It's his process, not his name. Allah is not the name of God either. Allah in Hebrew, H5927, means to ascend to God. It's not his name. It means to go up, to ascend to God. Deuteronomy 6.4 Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Echad Lord. There's only one door. Jesus said, I am the way, truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is the Messiah. The Messiah is not coming as another person or man. He's coming back as Jesus, the Messiah. You need water to cover and wipe out your sins, Acts 22, 16. God's name is revealed in Acts 2, 38. All power to remove sin is in his name, Acts 4, 8 through 12. The 10th letter, Yod in Hebrew. Jews use the word Adonai for the word Lord. They will not say Lord. They will not say Jehovah. They will not say Yahweh. They will say it will be spelled Yehovah, but they will say Adonai in the blessings. When they read Hebrew, they will say the word Adonai, even though it's spelled Yehovah. That's how much reverence they have for the name of the Lord. Elohim is the God of gods. That is as far up as you can be. He is the top God. 
the God of gods, the Lord, Genesis 1, 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The first shepherd breathed power on the water. See the Hebrew word? The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The Spirit of God, not a man, not a person. His Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the H. The first shepherd blew the power, blew breath, breathed the power, yod, on the water. See the difference? Yeshua, salvation is a the process. He is a savior. He's in the process of saving. H3444. His name is not Yeshua. That is the process. Salvation from sin. This is not the name of the Lord. It's his process. The ancient Israelite temples timeline. And you can read and study this later. You have Solomon's temple, Zerubbabel's temple, the tabernacle plan. And this gives you the timeline of when things were created and made. And it helps you to see through history. And in 70 AD was the last temple destroyed by the Romans. The Roman Catholics destroyed the Jewish temple. And this is the timeline. Here's the priestly blessing. And there's YouTube links if you want to learn how to pronounce it and say it. I would start with the Shema blessing. The priestly blessing I put in here because it shows the um, she, S-H-I, showing that. Number 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face toward you and give you peace. And they will have these first two verses here. Yavarechecha, and they say Adonai. It's spelled Yehovah, but they'll say Adonai. Veyishmerecha, Yair Adonai, Panav Elecha. And I will learn and teach you the root words, like ye here is the yod. The word for you is cha. Cha, the K there at the end is the KH in the vowel. I will teach you the vowels and with the words panav is face. Face, there's the letter mouth and the seed and the power. And the man, the face of God, to shine upon you. Yisa Adonai Panav Elecha Vayasim Lacha Shalom. Peace. These have the correct versions of the Bible. The Torah is the first five books of Moses. And some Orthodox groups only read the Torah and nothing else. The Tanakh has all the books of the Old Testament. And then the King James Version I use is the most 99% correct matching the Tanakh. So it has the last book was written in 105 AD in the Bible, the very last book. It wasn't Revelation, but the last book in the New Testament was written about 105 AD, so anything written after 105 AD is not of the Bible. The last book written in the Old Testament, Malachi, was written about 400 BC. So from 400 BC to 1 AD, there was 400 years of silence until Jesus was born in 1 AD. And this shows the time periods up here. And Jesus came from the son of David, 
all the way. There's where Jesus 11, 11. He's coming back again. Isaiah 11, 11. Jesus is returning again a second time. John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, Jesus, he shall teach you all things through the Holy Spirit. And salvation is in the book of Acts, given to the Jews first, and then the Gentiles. Acts 1, 2, 10, 4, 8, 11, 16, 19, and 22 give you all the steps for the last covenant of salvation for Jew and Gentile, Muslim and Asian, and all races in the world. To the Jew first, the Gentiles last. If you'd like to get a Hebrew set of the Bible, the best one I found is this one called the Living Torah and the Living Nach, and the Tanakh. You start with one volume. I would not buy all four. I would wait till you master the first five books of Moses in Hebrew before you spend money on the next three. They are in Hebrew on the right side of the page, English on the left. It was a very easy. It does have the correct Hebrew markings, translations. It does have the vowels in there. It reads right to left. So when you get the Living Tanakh, remember that the beginning of the book is at the end. You have to start with the back of the book. It is a set of four. The Hebrew Bible comes in three sections in the Old Testament. They divided it into four there. They made Torah and they divided up the prophets and then the writings. In the regular Tanakh, the early and latter prophets are all in one section. And here is the website if you want to see more about this, but buy only one by the Living Torah first. And it was in large print. Now also in the Hebrew Bible, you will see extra markings. We're going to learn the vowels, which are the red markings here. We're going to learn that in our lessons. But in the blue is the musical cantor for troping. It's called troping or cantor. The musical cantillation marks alongside the vowels in the classic biblical Hebrew. The Hebrew cantillation is the manner of chanting ritual readings from the Hebrew Bible in synagogue services. The chants are printed in the Masoretic text of the Bible to complement the letters and vowel points. These marks are known in the English as accents or diacritics, notes or trope symbols. So these are musical notes. These are musical markings showing them when to speak at different tones in the reading. So letters are in black. They're all large uppercase consonants. The nikud, the vowel points are in red. And the musical notes, the cantillation are in blue. So ignore the blue marks when you get your living Torah. Ignore the blue marks, the regular, these marks above. And we just pay attention to the consonants and the vowels. That's also on YouTube if you want to look up cantor or trope, the Jewish or Hebrew cantor or trope, you can hear it on the YouTube. The following is a small video on how to use the Strong's Concordance online and to edit to your cell phone, PC, or tablet. It will have also the Hebrew and Greek translations for you. There are four easy websites covered in the video. If you go to Google search Minister Gale, I have other classes available on my YouTube channel, more on salvation, the Strong's Concordance and Hebrew classes. I have two classes on my YouTube channel, the original full version of the water baptism and a revised smaller version explaining the mikvah, baptizo, and baptism. Go to these YouTube links to see live baptism in water 
in Jesus name and fill with the gift of the Holy Ghost with speaking in unknown tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. This fulfills Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4 and 38 and John 3, 3 through 8 where you must be born again. Isaiah 28, 11, For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. This class was created and published by me only for outreach and free class instruction through my nonprofit gospel hobby ministry. It is to be used for education and teaching purposes only and should not be copied or sold online or through other private entities. Thank you for joining the class today. Please subscribe and click the alert bell. If you go to Google search and type in Minister Gail Teacher, you will see all the classes that I have available on YouTube.